being the best version of ourselves, taking care of ourselves, that's important because he says that our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit and we're to take care of it. And we do things so that we take care of our health mentally, emotionally, and physically. Uh, but I know as soon as I grasp the concept spiritual health, it totally changed my mindset when it came to my physical health, emotional health. Hey there, I'm Amy Connell. Welcome to Graced Health, the podcast for women who want simple and grace-filled ways to take care of themselves and enjoy a little chocolate in the process. I'm a certified personal trainer and nutrition coach who wants you to know your eating, movement, and body don't have to be perfect. You just need to be able to do what you're called to do. I did a survey recently and asked people, my listeners, what they would like to hear more of on the podcast. From that, I learned two things. One, you like a mix of fitness, food, and general health, which I'm really trying to be a little bit more um, focused on that in the new year. And two, you want to hear a little more faith. I love hearing this because my faith is such an integral part of my whole self, myself, and my health, and it really has brought me to where I am today. However, I admit I don't I just don't always feel qualified to give lessons. Um, And I really don't know why. I think it's mostly because I'm just not confident in that. That is why, though, I'm excited for you to hear my conversation with Jamie Elizabeth today. We talk about identities in Christ, uh, her journaling process, which I have a really hard time doing consistently. I'm trying a little bit more right now. Um, The two different components of growing in scripture and our faith, her very creative and very applicable way of combating negative thoughts when stepping on the scale, so much more. I think you're going to really love this. Jamie is the host of the She Speaks Life podcast. She loves to create relationships through her podcast, giving everyday women a voice to influence others. Jamie has a passion for teaching and inspiring women to grow in God's word. She values God stories. um, Some people call those testimonies that help us know and develop deeper relationships with God. Over the past 10 years, Jamie has been actively involved in women's ministry leadership. She is a firm believer in linking arms with other women as God builds and transforms lives. Now, before we get to Jamie, I invite you to break some health rules with me. I know it's January. I know it is. And I know many of us are in that health reset mode. Yes, I am there too. But that doesn't mean we have to be bound by some of these traditional quote unquote rules of healthy living. My free download combats several health rules we've heard, and it gives you a bonus one to keep. Get yours over at gracedhealth.com slash bad rules, all one word, and the links in the show notes. Okay, let's bring on Jamie. Jamie, welcome to the Grace Health Podcast. Hi, Amy. I'm excited to be here. I'm really glad you're here. And I was just thinking, so you and I had a little bit of technical difficulties coming on because (laughs) of the health checks, (laughs) that the audio thing. And I was like, how appropriate is this? Because it was like health check failed (laughs) and all these things. It's not a good feeling at all. I felt very unhealthy there for a few minutes. (laughs) (laughs) I know. And you know... I think too, oftentimes coming in to this time of year, because this is airing in January, like that's kind of how we feel, right? Like health check failed (laughs) for December. I'm telling you. Yeah. I keep going into the cookie dough and I just need to stop. I don't know what it is. (laughs) I got this habit of just getting into uh, raw cookie dough in the freezer. And it started out with my kids and I'm just right there behind them. Oh yeah, this is so delicious. But you know, they're younger than me and they can handle those treats once in a while. Not me. So <laughs> do you make your own and keep it frozen or do you get like the, the pre-made stuff? No, just buy the pre-made stuff. And 
it's so bad because of raw eggs. I mean, of course, you're risking the salmonella or whatever, but we've been doing it for so long, so many years, but we mostly cook them. But every once in a while, I'll just be right behind my kids and picking out the frozen cookie dough and eating it. And it's just so bad. So I can tell it is not doing any good. And, you know, not just gaining weight, but my um, how I feel with all that sugar. So anyway, I, I the last few days, I said no and had a little self-discipline. So that's good. <laughs> <laughs> but there is more of those treats around the holidays. And by the time this month of January, you're starting to think about healthier <laughs> decisions and getting back on track. But then again, have a little grace, like your podcast, Grace Health, have a little grace for yourself around the holidays and enjoy it as well. Yeah. Yeah. It, and it is, a. I have never quite figured out that balance really well, but um, it is yeah. a balance and it is. And I think everybody's wired a little bit differently. I mean, I definitely like to have the more moderation and the more balance. And then there are other people in my life who are like, they need the the strict firm rules. Otherwise it's just wheels off. So that's yeah. one thing I have um, come to appreciate that not everybody operates the same way I do, which it's true in so many areas. <laughs> yeah. And uh, like you, I enjoy working out. And if I don't work out, it's a domino effect. If I don't work out, then I'll tend to eat worse during the day or I'll go for that bite of cookie dough, which isn't good. So totally. I know I got to start my day out in a good way. Therefore, it follows like dominoes. So anyway. yes. Yeah. I completely relate to that for sure. I If I don't if I did not feel like getting in the gym today. And in fact, I didn't get in at my normal time. And I was like, all right, come on, Amy, you better do this. <laughs> Otherwise, you're, it's not going to happen. So yes. I, I did, I did make it happen. But yeah, it's, it does impact the rest of your day, oftentimes. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> yeah. Um, I Jamie, I am so glad that you were able to come on the show today. Um, you know, it's funny, I periodically will put out uh, surveys or just kind of question my community. And one of the things that I'm hearing from them is like, you know, we, we love the fitness stuff The you know, I love geeky stuff. Um, you know, all, all things health and nutrition. But what I'm hearing is they want a little bit more Jesus. And they want to hear a little bit more about the integration of faith and health. And when I received this information, I uh, you you automatically came to mind because I know that you um, lead such a great community um, on your own podcast. She speaks life, and mm -hmm. I just wanted to bring you on to kind of have a little bit deeper discussion regarding our health because our faith um, is so intertwined in that. And I know that took me mm -hmm. a really long time to um, to, to kind of grasp yeah. onto and accept. Yeah. So I was I was mm -hmm. wondering. If you could start off by just sharing, um, sharing with the listeners a little bit about, um, a little bit about yourself, where you're coming from, you know, you, how did, I know you said you like working out. I mean, how did that come to be? You know, some people do it because they love it. Some people do it because, um, you know, they feel like they have to. And, um, I would just love a little to learn a little bit more about that. Sure. Yeah. Well, I married my high school sweetheart, and we have three kiddos. I guess kiddos, not anymore. I have basically a man child. He's 20 years old <laughs> in college, and we started out having babies at a young age since we got married so young, and uh, and then I have two teenagers. So uh, loving every season of watching them grow up, and it's just been amazing, and I came from uh, being raised in a Christian household. And, you know, one of the things, though, even though I was raised in a Christian household, I never seemed to really cultivate that personal relationship with Jesus. I just kind of went to church because my parents went to church. And that was basically it. I, for some reason, didn't have an interest to really get to know who God is. I just kind of lived a life. And I would say in high school, I encountered 
a rebellious spirit. Uh, I was raised in Southern California. And so the beach was my playground, basically. And I, yeah, and I think when you're on the beach for most of your time, you're in bikinis, Southern California, it's more of this outward appearance and being raised with a parent that put that importance of body image and how you looked on the outside as being something to kind of put out a priority instantly started growing this body image negative perspective about myself basically and so I think there was a lot of comparing, especially in high school, when you're going through that stage, you start to really take notice of your body. Everything's more sensitive. Hormones are, you know, out of control and crazy. And being raised in a heavily influenced environment where what you look like on the outside is what matters and being in a household where you were being fed that really caused me to have this negative outlook on my body. So the obsession with the number on the scale became what dictated my emotions that day. And yeah, it continued even out of high school and being a young adult and even having young babies. I mean, it was like, okay, had a baby, nursed, but the nursing didn't take the weight off like some moms, some blessed moms that happens. But for me, it just made the weight stay on. And it was, okay, grind time. I'm, you know, going to eat less. I'm going to work out like crazy and get my weight back. And that seemed to be such a priority in my life. And I think when we put those worldly things at the top of our list and not uh, things that are of God, it becomes more of this striving and just this trying type of mindset, which produces such exhaustion and it's unfulfilling. So I ended up out of curiosity going to a woman's Bible study. And I went afraid because I'm not good with anything unknown, right? It just scares me. So, <laughs> yeah. Like, I have no idea what to expect. I even know really what Bible study means. What is that? And why are women gravitating towards going and meeting on this Thursday morning? And so... It was basically this crossroad of tired of being in this life of emptiness to wanting something different, wanting something more, tired of constantly looking at myself and telling myself lies and, you know, negative things and, you know, not feeling good enough, basically. And so that's what drew me into uh, a woman's Bible study. And I instantly started feeling this, I don't know, this filling up. And I just knew, okay, this is why women go to these Bible studies, because it's about God filling us up not anything of the world that can really fill us up um, to to the to completely to complete you know overflow or or for it to be lasting. It's the world can fill you up, but it's temporary. And yeah. so uh, I just really you know I was tired of that temporary lifestyle basically and wanted something that was that would stick everlasting no matter what my circumstances were no matter you know what was going on around me I I wanted that um you know satisfied feeling that some of these other people seem to I don't know just have and I knew like it's because they have God they have Jesus their life is could be falling apart around them, but they're still filled with joy and they're still filled with peace because that's what God gives us, even though 
our, you know, life isn't going necessarily the way we want it. Yeah. So for you, it was really more of just a gradual change of heart. Not, yes. not something like, I don't know, you know, everybody has their own story. And I think that those of us who have kind of been able to to refocus from, you know, it's all about the body, it's all about what I weigh, it's all about how I look and, you know, how, you know, getting that pre baby body work in a back or whatever, um, mm-hmm. whatever that is. I mean, there's a sometimes it's like a really sudden change, but you know, you sound like me, where it was really more of a gradual shifting, even though mm-hmm. I very clearly felt God saying, you know, I've, I have shared this in, um, my story episode, which I think was like back in episode two, but it, you know, God saying you're spending more time thinking about the, you know, what you're going to eat and how you're going to work out than you are about me. Right, right. And I really wish I would have been like, oh, okay. And totally turn that around immediately. But it, it's a, it was a definitely a slow, a slow mm-hmm. process for mm-hmm. me as well. I'm curious, yeah. Jamie, how does this, how does your story with how it relates to body image impact the way that you parent your children? Oh, that's a good question. You know, that's not something I learned until way later. Because even though I feel like, you know, God's word, you know, having that foundation, that set foundation. So when I was able to get more into God's word and who his character is, it started to shift that mindset of how I think of myself. Because now I'm I'm reading these words from the living word, which is alive and active. I'm reading these words. And it's saying exactly what God says about me. And it's saying, you know, exactly about who God is. So I was replacing those negative thoughts, that negative mindset with a with more of the a truth mindset, positive mindset. And so that shift in my in my mindset helped me by the time, you know, my kids were at an age where uh, even at as young as five or six, my daughter and I, we'd be in the changing room in Target or whatever. And I'll catch myself going, oh, oh, I don't like this area. Oh, I look fat in this. And it wasn't until I realized, and if I heard it from somebody or I can't remember if it was God through prayer, but at that moment, in those in the dressing room with her i remember going you know what i don't i don't need to be saying those things because she's going to be looking at herself and saying that stuff about her body and would i want that would i you know shift the tables here if she was saying that about her body would i just be like honey no you're beautiful you know don't look at yourself that way and it's like that's how God is looking at us, right? Going, no, you're beautiful. Yeah. I made you. And, you know, one of the things I learned was if I look in the mirror and I'm saying, you know, gosh, oh, my stomach's not flat enough or I don't have a big enough booty. I don't look like Jennifer Lopez. Well, you're not meant to look like that. God specifically designed us in a unique way. And I'm dishonoring God if I say those things, negative things about my body, because that is his creation. You know, your body is his creation. And if we look in the mirror and not like it, then we're really dishonoring how he shaped us, how he molded us, how he uniquely, you know, interwoven, you know, our knitted us together in our mother's womb. So, I really realized that being the best version of ourself, taking care of ourselves, that's important because he says that our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit and we're to take care of it. And we do things so that we take care of our health mentally, emotionally, and physically. Uh, but I know as soon as I grasp the concept spiritual health, it totally changed my mindset when it came to my physical health, emotional health. And I truly believe if we can have this strong foundation rooted in God's word, having our quiet time, our alone time with him, 
and investing in our relationship with God, then everything else is going to follow in a healthy pattern. And it was just like talking about starting out our day working out And then everything else follows, right? Like if we don't work out, then I tend to like eat bad. Well, it's the same. Like if I don't start out my day with the Lord and have my quiet time with Him, then the rest of the day, it just seems not as peaceful, not as uh, more chaotic, not as joyful. And so I really feel like starting out really saved me. And I learned that at a young, when I had young babies, I had to make that time intentional. I had to wake up half hour, an hour before the kids would wake up, which is not something I feel like doing at all. (laughs) Especially when they're little. Oh my gosh. Because every minute- Yeah, every minute of, of extra sleep is right? precious. Right? Precious. Yes. Sure. So that was my sacrifice to the Lord. And he was looking at that and he blessed that time. It was like my mm-hmm. day was so I can have patience raising my kids. Uh I could, you know, be be filled up because, you know, out of that, the abundant life is basically living out of overflow. And we can only do that if we fill ourselves up with the Lord's word, with who he is, prayer time, whatever it is, you know, whatever fills you up. I like to journal. Uh, I like to just kind of sit still and hear from the Lord if, if he has a word for me. And that's just this little subtle prompting in my heart that just I'll write it down. And it's just things like that fill you up. And I would just basically feel more complete, more fulfilled if I did set that time um, for, you know, before the kids would wake up. But I had to be intentional, right? And it's not just going to come automatically. You got to put in the work, but God rewards it. God blesses it. And therefore, your kids grow up seeing you take that time investing in your relationship with the Lord uh, I want to say spending that time with the Lord and and Bible study and all that, it shouldn't be a, a check off your list. It should be uh, something you desire, want to do because you're investing in your relationship with the Lord and He desires to be with you. He desires to be with us more than we want to be with him. I'm sure, you know, he's just waiting. He's like, I am available and I am just waiting for you. And that's another thing. Sometimes if I'm too busy in the morning and I catch myself just not going through and having my quiet time with him, I get this little feeling like the Lord's telling me, I want to spend time with you, Jamie, my daughter, I want to spend time with you. And then I'm like, you know what? That's right. I need to stop what I'm doing, go somewhere quiet and go have that time. But when you have littles, it's, you know, a little harder. Uh, So I had to really put out that time aside, wake up before they did, uh, because mornings worked for me. Some people it's night, mornings worked for me. Um, So there's really not a wrong way to spend time with God. (laughs) It could be any time. But for me, it was morning. Yeah, it's funny. I do a um, U version plan with just a, a couple friends, and several of us get. So one girl gets up like at four thirty, and then another girl and I get up at five thirty, and so our little comments come in right at the same mm-hmm. time. And then it's always the an, another friend. She's always doing something like the night before. So yeah, <laughs> it's it's at different times. And you know, it's funny as you were talking. One of the things I have struggled with as a mom is. Um, you know, we all have our own different habits and and rhythms in the morning. And um, I will have my quiet time, you know, right before the kids will come down for breakfast. And so, you know, my boys are teenagers, they're they're really self-sufficient. I have really had to kind of do a check on my reaction sometimes because every now and then like one of them will come down a little bit early. Mm -hmm. And my my initial reaction is I'm kind of irritated because I'm like, 
You have just interrupted my time with Why are you up so early? <laughs> I, yeah. I know. And it's funny. I was talking with a girlfriend one time and she said that she was doing, you know, she had the same experience with her daughter. So I know I'm not alone, at least with, I've got one other friend who does the same thing. And it's sometimes it's really hard because it's like, okay, this is an invitation mm. For my mm-hmm. child to at least witness what I'm doing, um, and it's not an inter- interruption. Mm-hmm. But but yeah, it's really hard. And and I want to go back to what you were talking about with your daughter in the in the you know yeah. changing room at Target. Mm-hmm. Um, for whatever it's worth, I had a um, a counselor on back in uh, season three, and I, it was to all about raising daughters with healthy body image. And she said the exact same that you figured out, or she said the exact thing you figured out on your own, which was our daughters are listening to what we're saying about mm-hmm. ourselves and other people, not what we're saying about right. them. So, which I found uh, really interesting and impactful. And I don't, you know, I don't have daughters, but I still think that that is stuff that I definitely need to, um, you know, I still have to remember. Um, okay. So let's get back to God's work. Cause I know that that's a really special time for you. And I know that you have, um, really created some opportunities for your community. I would love to hear how the different ways that you invest your time with God, how you read his word, I don't know about you, but for me, I tend to do a lot of different things. Like sometimes I buy a Bible study. Sometimes I just read through the scriptures. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's the YouVersion plan. Um, So tell us a little bit about some of the ways of connecting with God through his word have have worked for you. Well, first of all, I think it's important to know the end game. You need to have the end game in mind, right? You need to have, okay, how do I feel when I do invest in in my relationship with the Lord? And it's going to be fulfilling because that's just how God is. And so whenever right. we tend to get busy and put that in front of spending time with the Lord, we just need to go back and go, oh, you know what, though? Spending time with the Lord and thinking of what what having that in game in mind you know, how important it is to have that quiet time with god and what it's going to do with my children maybe not just yourself but just like we were talking about having your kids see you with the bible open on the couch speaks volumes even if they don't say anything they are still seeing you and they're absorbing it and it's making an impact more than you'll ever know. I'm seeing it now as they're my kids are teenagers and I see them having a desire to get plugged in at church, having a desire to have a personal relationship with the Lord at such an early age. I mean, I didn't have that at all in high school, of course, but having them see you over time really planted some seeds that you don't even know is going to happen later in life. And I'm able to say, hey, my kids are older teenagers. I have a young college student and I'm able to watch God work in and through those kids. And not to say it's all because they saw mom on the couch opening the Bible, but there was a seed that was planted along with a million other seeds. And for them to see you as a parent and best time with your relationship with the Lord, it makes a huge impact. Knowing that, you know, that there is something uh, that I am doing for others and eventually, you know, being able to, I'm in a women's ministry, so I'm able to pour out into women and, you know, and that's seasonal because when they were, my kids were young, I didn't have that capacity. I didn't have, I was pouring out into the kids. And now that they're a little older, I can have a little more of this, you know, room to be able to pour out to other women. And so having, you know, what you do in your private time is where all the growth happens. That's where, you know, you just feel this, this 
increase in your spiritual growth. And so I, there's two things that I find that's really important. It's important to have your own quiet time. And then also I'm a huge advocate of getting involved in a community with other women and doing some kind of Bible study together. Because what happens to that is when you're doing um, something topical or a book out of the Bible, there's a million Christian authors and, and writers out there that have these amazing Bible studies that you there's so many topics, so many uh, characters in the Bible that you can learn about. There's so many out there, and I find it so uh, amazing to be able to talk about that with other women. And so they're going to get insight that maybe you didn't get insight on. You know, some of these authors will pull things out of that verse or, you know, that character of that person in the Bible or something of God that you have read this verse over and over again, never saw it. So at the same time, though, you don't want to replace that with your quiet time with God because you want to read the Bible on your own and allow the Holy Spirit to highlight things, to speak to you. Uh, and, and, you know, and whether that's reading a verse or two and then doing a little journaling if you like journaling um i 5 years ago i did not journal and it it wasn't until i saw somebody else getting so much out of journaling and their quiet time and i'm like well what the heck i'll check it out you know i'll try it and i got so much out of it. It was such a game changer for me because I was able to really just write out all my thoughts, see it on paper, write out prayers. You know, it's it's a written record of you talking to God. And, you know, if you write down things that maybe you feel like God's speaking to you about, you write those things down, you can look back later and go, oh, wow, you know, this was something I was praying about and look, it was yeah. answered or <laughs> it's just so amazing. Yeah. So I highly recommend that. But, you know, I have these different ways. Yeah. Can I, can I, oh, okay. I was going to say, I want to stop because, no, it's good. or I, I'm, I guess I'm interrupting. I want you to go in a little bit more into the journaling, but I had this realization when you were talking about the importance of our own quiet time and also with connecting with other women. And I thought, mm -hmm. you know, Jesus modeled that. I mean, he had that time with his disciples. Right. He had that time where he was, you know, in communion with his 12 disciples and yeah. he went off on his own. And I, that's never, so actually you just gave credence to the comment of like women, other women will give you um, an insight that you've seen a million times. I mean, I like, these are two facts that I knew, mm -hmm. but you saying that I'm like, oh yeah, both of those are really important. And we saw that yeah. during Jesus's yeah. time on earth. So thank you for that. Yeah. That was, yeah, that, no, that, I don't and know. That just I just finished <laughs> a study on Paul and um, Paul did the same thing. It was his, his, he was demonstrating his local church is important. Also, outreach was important. So he was going out there evangelizing, but then also strengthened and encouraged the local believers. So um, you can look at it that way too, because, um, you know, here you are, you're strengthening your household yourself here at home. And then in the community, you're strengthening, encouraging your women when you gather for a Bible study. Yeah, that's a great point. Okay, so talk to me a little bit about your journaling because I have to I have to admit. So, you know, I'm I'm in the process of writing this book and it's really funny to hear other authors be like, "I've journaled mm -hmm. since I was 6 years old yeah. and I have, you know, <laughs> spiral notebooks and yeah. journals." I'm like, "I don't do that." And every every time I do it, it lasts for about 
19 days. And then I like, I just kind of give up on it. I mean, I've tried like the three point bullets. I've tried just pulling, I mean, my very, very favorite thing, my biggest productivity tool are like the 17 cent spiral mm-hmm. notebooks that we get at the grocery store yeah. at the beginning of the school year. Like that's what I, <laughs> I've tried the pretty ones. I've mm-hmm. tried, you know, the, the meads. I mean, like I, 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 I have yet to find something that really clicks. So I would love to hear your um, your practice for it and what you might recommend to someone who's just starting out with that. Well, yeah, I was just like you. I didn't get it. I didn't understand it. I thought, oh, those are for the writers out there. And I when I just gave it a try, I just instantly started feeling this shift and this more intimate time with the Lord. And with my journal, I've got scripture verses at the top. So if I'm going through this one verse, scripture verse, I go through this, and this is a way of studying the Bible too. So you don't have to have a journal, but this is one way I journal and the way I study the Bible. So if you get a journal with a scripture verse and so you read the scripture and I do this thing called SOAP, right? So it's an acronym for scripture, observation, application, and prayer. So the scripture, I'm reading it and I'm kind of pulling out maybe the one or two words that are really sticking to me. So maybe it's trust or hope or faith. And then the observation part is what's going on around the scripture verse? Like who's saying it? You know, is, is the author Paul? Is it Jesus? Uh, what's going on at that time? So it's kind of crucial to kind of look around that scripture verse, what's going on. Um, like in Psalm, it's, you know, maybe David trying to escape from his enemies, right? And you can see him crying out for the Lord because he's afraid. And so it just helps make it come alive to you. It paints a picture. And then the application, well, what does this have to do with me? What, you know, it's like that was the one thing that I didn't understand before I went to Bible study in that woman's ministry group that I attended the first time. I didn't understand that the Bible was for me for now. I just kind of thought, oh, you know, it's just a bunch of stories about, you know, the (laughs) past and what does it have to do with me? And I think in life, we generally want to know what's in it for me. What, what, what am I going to get out of this? Right. And so, yeah, it's just a part of our nature. And so when we go and apply in that scripture verse, how does this, was this, was this saying to me in my life, uh, then it brings it, you know, more intimate. And then you start kind of writing about it. That's where I really start to journal. Okay. So you use this soap method, like you'll read some scripture and then you'll use yes, that yes. as and you journal. Sometimes um, the Got it. observation okay. part, I'm not writing out, oh, you know, it's David escaping from enemies. I'm just reading and going, oh, you know, and that's more of when I am doing a Bible study because I'm able to look around the scripture verses. But if I'm journaling, I will look at a scripture and I will see, you know, what are some words that are being uh, highlighted to me? And then I'll write down, how does this apply to my life? And then comes the prayer part. And that's when I'm basically writing out my prayer to the Lord. So instead of vocalizing it, which is important too, um, again, there's no wrong way to have your quiet time with God. This is just something I do. And I find it really helpful to write out my prayer. And it's as if I'm just, I'm just talking to him, but I'm writing it out. And sometimes I leave some lines to where I sit still and ask God, Lord, 
what do you want to say to me? Is there anything that you want to speak over my life, over my heart right now? Chances are there's things that come and I just write them down. I mean, it's not some audible voice or anything. It's just this little like soft knowing in my heart, this little prompting. And I basically just start writing. It's not even like it's really going through necessarily my mind. I am just kind of writing out what I feel. I'm a I'm a feeler. So it's like if I'm feeling something, like I feel like God's just saying I love you, you know, and I'll just write down, you know, uh, I love you, my faithful daughter. I'm so proud of you. Like I'll just start speaking life over me. And and you know, that encouragement, those words that are just coming out of nowhere is the Holy Spirit. So don't doubt that it's you or, you know, it's just something that is going on in your own mind. It's actually the Holy Spirit speaking through you. You have to just start writing. It's it's not one of those where you're really um, thinking about it before you write. Just start writing and then you'll be able to read and go, wow, you know, all that love and encouragement that is coming from God because we know that's the only thing that that's that's how he speaks, right? If it's if it's the enemy, it's it's negative, it's toxic, it's the polar opposite of encouragement and love. Uh, that's how I journal and some of the things too that really helps me is personalizing scripture verses. Instead of having the you and we in a scripture verse, I replace it with my name or an I or me. Yeah, some scripture verses already have me or I. So those verses, like I have my life verse, Romans 15, 13, that I love. And it says, now may God, the inspiration and fountain of hope, fill Amy to overflowing with uncontainable joy and perfect peace as Amy trusts in him. And may the power of the Holy Spirit continually surround Amy's life with his super abundance until Amy radiates with hope. Like how much more intimate does that like feel? Yeah, that's so, yeah, that's really impactful. Um, it's funny you say this. So I have um, a really good friend who turned mm-hmm. 50 about a year and a half ago. She gave us um, personalized scripture cards. Have you seen these? So it has like, I don't, I mean, it has a ton of them on there. It's, um, I'm just putting this out, but it's joyful, joyfuldawn.com. I think she must've gotten them off of um, Etsy, but they're sitting, it's so funny you say it because they're, they're sitting on the, my desk. So it's like, The one that's here is Amy, I will not let you be tested beyond what you can endure. First Corinthians 10, 13. Um, And then Isaiah 12, 12, you can trust me and trust in me, Amy, for I am your strength and your song. So that's exactly what you're talking about. And um, yeah, I thought that was, I had never seen those. Those were really, really cool. I'll put that in the link below if anyone wants to get them. No, I mean, it's life changing. When we do those things, we're really, um, we're setting down those deep roots in, in God's word. And then you have that renewal of your mind, right? And so that's basically what happened to me going from that body image horrible outlook on myself to now renewing my mind with God's truth. So no longer, and this was gradual, but no longer was the scale dictating my behavior. But instead I was, because I was feeding myself God's truth, I was now having the Holy Spirit control my thoughts and behaviors. And so one of the things out of journaling, God, I felt like saying, Instead of looking at those numbers, why don't you write down what I think of you on your scale? And I have a kind of a see-through scale. It's a glass scale. And I just wrote all over it saying, I'm chosen, I'm known, I'm seen, I'm called, I'm wonderfully made. I have a purpose. Oh, I love yeah, that. I'm, That's a gr- I've never heard of that. That's a great so idea. Now when you're looking down, because I tried... Let me tell you, I tried taking that scale and hiding it in the closet and going, well, maybe this will fix it, right? I'm going, okay, maybe I can hide the scale and then not go on it. 
And it didn't work because basically I wasn't getting rid of the root. So God wants to get in there and go, I want to heal you. So opening up your heart, surrendering, I had to like just allow him in all those rooms of our heart because I know for me and I'm sure most of us will compartmentalize. We'll go, okay, God, you can come in this room, but you can't go in that room, right? It's like, don't treat God as a guest, treat him as your family member, right? So you're not going to allow your family member not go in one room. And it was the same thing. It was like he needed to enter in all those areas that needed healing. And once I was able to just crack open that door, you know what light does to darkness, it overtakes it. It just completely changes. And so I started feeling this this mending and making myself whole and uh, replacing those lies with his truth. And as I did that, I started looking at my body in a wonderful way and going, gosh, I am uniquely made with unique gifts and a plan and a purpose that's just for me that's not going to look like somebody else's and how special that is to be like a, you know, no two snowflakes are alike and no two diamonds are alike that I just found out and recently. And so I really started getting this, oh, I'm so special in that way. And thank you, God, for creating us that way. That's beautiful. I think that's a really great applicable thing that anyone can take. And yeah, just if they, if they choose to get on the scale, um, I think that's a great one. And I think that leads into something too, that I was hoping you could tell everybody a little bit about. And that is, um, download that you have called God's ID, my ID. And you really take a lot of the things that we can say about ourselves and replace that with God's word and God's truth. Can you share a little bit about that with our listeners and how they can get it? So that was very important in my spiritual growth, obviously, is as I was doing my Bible studies, reading God's word, I was finding out who his character was, his attributes, and therefore then finding out who I was. And I think it's important that we see who God is and his nature and uh, his attributes, because when we do that, then we're going to see what he says about us. And now we're going to really, truly believe those words that he's saying. So getting to know who he is, is very important to know who we are, right? So I felt like this had to go hand in hand. And as I sat in my quiet time, God just downloaded all of these attributes to me of who he was. And as I was reading the Bible, it all tied into my identity. So God's ID, his identification, who he is, has to do always with who we are and our identification. So God is wisdom, for example. In Romans eleven thirty three, it said Paul wrote, "Who could ever wrap their minds around God's riches and the depths of His wisdom?" And take that now. How does that apply to my identity? That we have godly wisdom. Because in James 1, 5, it says, if anyone asks for wisdom, God will give it. And it's the same thing with God mm. is infinite. In Psalm 147, 5, it says he has infinite understanding of everything. Now, what does that have to do with me and my identity? That we are limitless through God. Because it says in John 14, 12, Jesus said, we will do even greater works when he leaves because we will have the Holy Spirit as our advocate and will empower and fill us for his great purposes for his kingdom. So I have this whole free download. If you go on my website, jamieelizabeth.com, and it's just this free download of all these attributes of course, there's so many more, but the download would be really, really long if I put down all of them. <laughs> well, and you, you say that, though, I, I mean, 
that's it's a really rich and um there's a lot of depth there and there's a lot of scripture and I love how you were able to tie in um how it relates to God and then how his word relates to us. I just I think you made such a beautiful um guide. I don't know if that's the right word for us. Thank you. Thank you for blessing people with that because yeah, it was oh God. Yeah, that was really <laughs> I had good. Nothing to do with it. Um, Seriously, you were <laughs> telling me which attributes yeah. because there's a million attributes and these aren't your your typical, you know, there is love, there is faith and, you know, some of those ones, but he was just really giving me some ones that maybe we don't necessarily think about, uh, about him or about ourselves. And so, yeah, it was just him. It was great. Yeah. I love stories like that. I love it when you can see the fruition of, well, like you say, the wisdom, you know, just of little of, of what he gives us over time. And I, and, you know, and, and mm-hmm. I kind of feel like that's rewards too of the time that you spend, because then you're able to more deeply understand um, his word and what he's trying to, yeah. you know, what he's trying to communicate with us. Okay. So we are um, sitting at the beginning of January. I know a lot of people did 2020 <laughs> vision boards, which were thrown in the <laughs> trash mid-March. <laughs> what kind of motivation might you give to people as they start thinking about Mm. their 2021 year? Start out with your spiritual journey. I know sometimes we automatically go to our health journey or, you know, where we're at physically, but I would just encourage everyone to just do a little heart check on where we're at in our spiritual journey. What are some things you can implement? Are those the things here that we just talked about of, maybe having more quiet time with God, opening up that Bible. Maybe you've never done it before and you'd like to start. I I know this analogy of running that marathon. People aren't running marathons or running a 10K like that was the longest one I ran and that will be the last one. <laughs> The longest and the last, (laughs) but I wasn't running that race to win first place. I was running to see, okay, like I want to say that I finished, right? And that's what God is saying. Just finish. There's a scripture verse even. Finish that race well, right? Be faithful. Just continue to be faithful. And how do we continue to be faithful? By spending time with him and knowing What are those things that he is saying to us? But we won't know that unless we invest that time with him by setting aside that quiet time, by carving out, okay, Lord, this is your time with me. And if you're already doing that, then awesome. Uh, Maybe getting involved in a community Bible study. And uh, I know there's a lot of online Bible studies. I lead one. Yeah, I led one since January of this year. So even before the corona pandemic thing happened, I was running these online Bible studies because I found people were interested through my social media. And I'm always mostly on Instagram. And so a lot of those women would just see a advertisement of, hey, I'm doing this free online Bible study. Uh, Some of them, you just purchase your book on Amazon. It's like $10, but I would provide these videos for free. And then we would come on Zoom together once a week. And we just discuss what we learned. What, What was it that God spoke to us about or what was something that left a mark in us that week. And so it's like as if you're friends for a long time and you know only God can do that. Only God, when you put a, you know, set a friendship on his foundation can make you just feel like, oh my gosh, I just love these girls and I've, you know, never met them face to face live before. So you can look for me on my social media for new online Bible studies if that's your thing. Yeah. Well, so tell everybody how they can get a hold of you and especially um, over on Instagram, if, if they're interested in participating in a future one. 
Jamie Elizabeth, she speaks life. That's my Instagram handle. And okay. uh, that's where they can DM me. I'm always looking at, you know, direct messages, look for when I advertise when I don't know when the next one will be, but that's where I will have it promoted. And I'm also on Facebook, Jamie Elizabeth. And I have a newsletter that goes out uh, weekly. And so I'll tend to put that in my newsletter. So if you go on jamieelizabeth.com and subscribe to the newsletter, subscribe on there, then you'll get the newsletter on the upcoming events and things that uh, happen as, as, along with the new podcasts that come out every week. Got it. Okay, cool. Um, okay, I have two more questions. Yeah. One is not anything like what we have been talking about, but it's something I'm asking my guests as of late. And that is, I am fascinated by tattoos. I don't have any, but I feel like people often put a lot of thought into them when, mm-hmm. before they you know, get something permanent on their body. So I'm wondering if you have one, if you might tell us the meaning behind it. And if you don't, if you had to get one, what would you put and where? Oh, wow. Well, I do. I, at 18 years old, because like I said, I had a little rebellious spirit and my parents would tell me, don't ever get a tattoo. And because I wanted to go against what they said, I, as soon as I (laughs) got out of the house at 18, I got a tattoo on my ankle and, uh, it's a flower. It's bigger than I wanted it to be. I tell my kids, you know, it's permanent. It's something that is um, <laughs> not going <laughs> to disappear. Yeah. And the uh, if you don't like it when you're 70 years old, it's going to be <laughs> really hard to get that lasered off. And yeah. um, so I did I answer your question or was there another question? Yeah, <laughs> no, it is. Yes, you answered my question. Yeah. I just think that there it's it's interesting. It's funny. I mean, I think one of the reasons I've never gotten one is for the, what you just said. I'm like, I don't know what first of all, I know the body ages. Like there's nothing that I have wanted that I think I would be okay with for the rest of my life. <laughs> yeah. And your answer is no, you should not get a tattoo then. I wasn't looking at where I was going to be at 40, 50 years old or whatever when I got my tattoo. You're just not when you're in your 20s or when you're 18, you're not thinking about how is this going to look when I'm 40. That thought never entered my mind. So that's one thing I tell the kids and the kids are like, oh, yeah, okay. I don't don't think I want one. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Well, I've had that conversation with my kids too. I'm like, just know that whatever you get is with you for a long time. So you better be really good and sure about it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then the other one uh, is um, that I've been asking my guest is, do you have a meaningful Bible verse you would like to share? Yeah. The Romans 15, 13 is my life verse that I just said with your name and put it in it. But one of the things that really As we were talking about body image and we're talking about the renewal of your mind and replacing the negative with God's truth about who you are, I love the whole chapter of Psalm 139 because it's basically saying, um, you know, all about how God knows about us. All You know all about me basically is the subject line at the top of this chapter. And it's all about how much... God knows all about us. And I think it's just beautiful. Uh, So I wanted to just read a little bit. Psalm 139, 3 through 5 here. It says, "You You are so intimately aware of me, Lord. You read my heart like an open book, and you know all the words I'm about to speak before I even start a sentence. You know every step I will take before my journey even begins. You've gone into my future to prepare the way. And in kindness, you follow behind me to spare me from the harm of my past. With your hand of love upon my life, you impart a blessing to me. And then it just talks about how wonderful and incomprehensible he is and just being in awe and wonder. And then I'm just jumping to verse 13, because this really talks about how God 
you know, forms us and shapes us into his image. And it says, starting with verse 13, you formed my innermost being, shaping my delicate inside and my intricate outside and wove them all together in my mother's womb. I thank you, God, for making me so mysteriously complex. Everything you do is marvelously breathtaking. It simply amazes me to think about it, how thoroughly you know me, Lord. You know, I often say, he who has designed you defines you. I just want to leave you guys with that because that exactly is God our creator defines us. And I just uh, live by that every day and (laughs) say those words over and over again, because if it's not body image, it's going to be something else. And uh, I just want to motivate everyone to just, you know, start out surrendering over to the Lord, any areas of your heart that need healing. And then don't let uh, what happened in 2020 to mess up dreams for your for your future for 2021. Yeah. Just go for it and have your spiritual health um, just be strong in that and, and that sure foundation in that because everything else will follow suit. When you're strong in uh, your, your faith and um, – just gaining wisdom and increasing in your trust with God, then everything else is going to just seem, you know, just to follow in that healthy pattern. So I love that. I love that. Thank you. Hey, Jamie, thank you for coming on. I know my listeners are definitely going to feel filled, (laughs) feel filled today. (laughs) So I really appreciate you coming on. Yeah. And oh, I wanted to say I do have journals on my website too. So if you do feel like journaling, they have personalized scripture verses on there as well. So you get the little, you know, filling in the blank of your name and you get lines where you can write down uh, your prayers. So cool. Very good. Yes. Go check that out. Okay. Thank you so much. Thanks, Amy. If you loved what Jamie had to say, I really encourage you to go check out her free download. It's so rich. God's ID, my ID, and also her podcast, She Speaks Life. Links to both of those are in the show notes. I just really pray that today's conversation enriched your spirit and gave you ways to grow in God's word. Also, if you don't get my monthly journals, I invite you to sign up for them over at gracedhealth.com slash monthly dash journals links in the show notes. This is my way of sharing all kinds of different things with you like recipes and foods and hacks and workouts and music and all kinds of different things. It's only available to those who sign up. So this isn't something you can go hunt down on my website. Not that you would want to do that, but uh, it's not there. It's not there anywhere else on the interweb. It's only there for the, uh, for those who have signed up for it. Each episode, I give you one simple thing to remember. Sometimes we just cover so much, it's hard to digest it all. If I could give you one takeaway for today, it's the importance of both our quiet time and fellowship as we uh, grow our relationship with God. I love how she said, um, the Bible learning you do in your private time is really where the growth happens. I know I'm trying to dig in a little more right now. If you are too, grab Jamie's download and follow her on Instagram so you can be informed when her next online Bible study is. Okay, that is all for today. Go out there and have a graced day. Mm